Hello, I'm Daniel Myers with Simplicity Cattle Management and UC Davis Animal Science Department. I've been managing this herd for them for about eight years now. And I'm going to make a video and showing the techniques I use to assist a uh, delivery. What we have here is a two-year-old first calf heifer. And we're going to go ahead, uh, she's got her water sack out. We're going to go ahead and see what we have. I'll go ahead and get a little straw down, soften the landing of the cap a little bit, and the first order of business is we're going to diagnose the delivery of the cat, diagnose the presentation uh, of the delivery. So I'm going to lube up, it's just regular OB lube. And I put it in a smaller container so I can keep it right in my pocket while I'm back here assisting. And we'll go in and see how the cap is positioned. Uh, I've got two feet and I can feel the nose. So everything is, everything's facing the proper direction. I'll go ahead and grab one foot. See if I can work it out a little bit so that I can position the chain. And these OB chains to make a loop, you just drop one down, you just drop it down in beside itself. And I'll position it on my hand like this. If you put it over your wrist, when you go in, it's going to slide up your arm. So I'll put it in over my hand and then use my thumb to kind of work it uh, if I have to put them on inside the cow but she's going to make it easy on us so I'll see if I can work it on when I put these chains on I like to get one of them up above the fetlock Snug it down and then I'll put a half hitch in it and put the half hitch between the fetlock and the hook. That will increase the surface area of the tension we're putting on this foot. And make sure that your pull is from the bottom of the hook. You don't want it pulling from the side, either side or the top. If I have to place the chains when it's inside the cow, I don't concern myself too much with getting this this type of a of a, of a grab on because then I'm I'm more concerned with just getting the foot out far enough to where I can reposition it. And these are some pretty big pretty big feet we've got coming. Uh, I would like to mention that most all of your dystocia problems can be taken care of at breeding. A good breeding program, you can do away with a lot of problems. Uh, every now and again you are going to have one that's just exceptionally large. And here comes the second foot. So I'm going to go ahead and take the opportunity and grab it and see if I can get the change position on it as well. Once again, up above the fetlock, let it down, make sure I don't have any parts of her in there, half hitch between the fetlock and the hoof, and the pull is on the bottom. Now that I have my chain positioned, 
what I really like to do is I'll simply go in and between the calf and the vaginal wall I'm just running my hand back and forth kind of massaging in there that will do two things it will induce her to contract and it will also help soften everything up in there and help her dilate spreads a little more lube in there and I'll spend I have to I'll spend quite a bit of time simply doing this instead of going and grabbing the, the calf pullers I'll spend some time just massaging loosening everything up She's acting like she's ready to come out of there. So we're going to go ahead and start start assisting with that. And I'm going to reposition my chains. One thing that you should always be aware of is these chains, they will kind of reposition themselves. So it's kind of a constant thing that I do is, is I'm always repositioning them, make sure that the pull is from the bottom again. And when I do this, I'm just providing constant tension. I'm not jerking, and I don't like to pull any harder unless she's contracting. So I match my pull with her contractions. And as I said, I can cause her to contract, just like that there. So I'm going to pull a little bit more. She's just about ready to come out of there. And then I will reposition it, uh, the handle. I'll pull one foot. And I'll reposition this chain, and then I'll pull the other foot, uh, where you can kind of more if you think more about walking him out of there, it might make a little more sense. pops out of there, the cap generally comes out right away. Doing a fantastic job with their contraction. changing which leg I'm pulling from. One thing about these head catches like this, she's going to go down and that's okay. Uh, I don't like assisting in a shoot, a regular squeeze shoot, because if they go down your problems have just begun. Uh, and also with a squeeze shoot you're very limited as far as different angles that you can pull from. that chain and I'll reposition that chain I can go ahead and get her all the way down see if I can get her on her side all 
I'm not bashful with the lube. I've assisted a lot of deliveries and all I had was dish soap to help. I've assisted a number without anything. Um, dish soap seemed to, it's not advisable because the detergent, if you can get a non-detergent kind, it's better. But it will go ahead and break down her natural lubricant. The OB lube is fairly inexpensive. And the pole that I'm using is more of an out and down, more at kind of this angle to get him up over the pelvis. And it's just right here. Get him through the last little spot. I'm going to change my angle a little bit. And here it comes. In a shoot, you would not be able to do this. Uh, but like I said, with that head catch, I can change the angle that I'm pulling from. I have a lot more options. And once they start coming, I like to go ahead and bring them out. Whether she's contracting or not, I like to go ahead and get in. Get him out. First order of business. We're going to stimulate him. And doing that, I'll take some of that straw that I laid down. I'm just going to vig vigorously rub him. This mimics what the cow will do out in the field when they get up and lick. Make sure everything's clear. Keep rubbing him. A good sign that I'm looking for is he'll just start to shake his head. On his own, I'm shaking his head now. That wasn't for your benefit. Uh, but he'll start to shake his head around. Uh, another thing that I'll do is I'll take a piece of straw and put it in his nose. Tickle it. I would much rather the cow does this herself. Um, it's a good time for them to bond. Uh, but I am doing this as a, as a teaching video. And that's the reason I brought her in, was just to take the opportunity to make a video. I would much rather they calve outside in the, in the pasture. Um, pathogen loads are a lot less. And it also makes for better cows when they can do it all on their own and we don't meddle in their, in their business. There, he's starting to try to breathe. He's all clean and there he's shaking his head. I don't know if they shake their head to say no, I want to go back in. But that's always a good sign when they can shake when they start shaking their head like that. Or maybe they're shaking their head to say stop rubbing on me. Sticking things in my nose. There he's starting to sneeze and cough all that off out of there. An old trick that a lot of people still use is to hang them upside down with the gate. 
or just hang them upside down. Uh, I don't particularly care for that because it, it seems like you put a lot of weight on their diaphragm, makes it hard for them to breathe, so uh, you might be, you could possibly be defeating the purpose. So I just like to do a lot of there. I like to do a lot of rubbing. And he's going ahead and he's going to go ahead and do well. So now I will move him into another small pen. I'll turn her out and turn her with him and make sure that, uh, that she wants to be a cow. So thank you for watching and I hope you watch the rest of our videos.